Hi, this is Andre. This video is going to be looking at making grain clouds in Bitwig, and specifically two different ways that you can add a density knob to the sampler. I'll show you both of these patches that I have and then explain to you the difference in how they work and then how to go about adding a density knob to your patches. So here's this first one. <laughs> And then uh, here's this other patch. And this last one was like, a, if you want to know what the sample that was in, it was this. And then this one has some drums loaded in. And uh, I'll play you a minute of this and then show you how they work. And I think this one probably sounds a little better because it gets more grains. But I'll, yeah, I'll explain the difference. <laughs> All right, so I'll explain to you now the difference between these and how they're working. So this first one is using voice stacking. And um, this one, so with voice stacking, it's limited. You know, actually, before I even go into that, I should explain to you the whole purpose of doing this. So when you load up textures, the granular mode in Bitwig Sampler, the only extra parameter you're given is grain size. So at first, it kind of seems like it'd be limited compared to other granulators because typically in a granulator, you would have uh, knobs like jitter and density. So jitter can be added easily by just adding randomization because that's basically what jitter is. You can add a randomization to the grain size, the position, the pitch. That'll give you jitter. And then as for density, density is basically how many grains are getting stopped, stacked on top of each other. So in this one, I'm using voice stacking. I would say this isn't the best way because uh, it's limited to only five. Uh, but if you're going to play a polyphonic f patch, I feel like this is probably a good way to do it because you can increase the amount of notes you're playing and then each note will have five on top. And the whole point of adding a density knob is that um, when you're playing granular synths, you want to be able to, to automate the density and uh, you can't automate this. So basically what I did, I just have this voice stack modulator over here and I have this knob assigned to it. So if you hear me, if you hear me play one Here's one voice, two, three, four, five. And uh, there's also some other fun things you can do with with these, I've just been playing around with them. So the, um, in case you want to check this out, this is another kind of interesting thing you could do with voice stacking if you have something like this going. So like here I have a couple different snapshots of just different parameters and I can kind of snap through them and it'll give you sort of a weird steppy sound. Oh, whoops, do I have my density down? Why am I, oh yeah, I turned the density off, whoops. Actually, this doesn't seem to be. Do I, I might have unmapped this. Oh, just, you can't really hear it unless. 
us that's up all right anyway so enough of that i'll, I'll basically explain so i'm not going to get into everything to make a grain cloud because it's all pretty straightforward with the randomization the only tricky part for here was adding the density knob and yeah i don't know if i mentioned so I would probably do this way if I was playing a polyphonic patch. I only, I'm only playing one note right now, but I think this would be an easier one for doing a polyphonic patch. The other one goes up to 16 voices, but I think it's better for a monophonic patch. And you can expand, it, expand that one to do as many voices as you want. But basically, I just have this series of logic. And there's actually simpler ways you could do this right now with the MSCG. So I could even show you, maybe I'll show you that first before even getting into the into this way with the logic because now in bitwig 5 we have the mscgs so yeah maybe i'll show you uh, two different methods to do the voice stacking way first um and one thing to note so in this patch i actually have a monophonic polygrid where this whole density thing is set up and then this is inside of it that has all the voices uh do I, yeah i don't have a note grid so um yeah let me show you on a separate Actually, before I even do that, so I'll show the difference between these two, and then I'll show you how to set that up. So this one is set up not with voice stacking. This one basically is also nested inside of another polygrid patch. So it's over here. This one goes to 16 voices. And if you look at this, you can actually see which voice is active. So basically what I did in this one is I have this density knob that's just going through... Well, I'm not even going to... I'll show that part after, but basically this density knob is just turning on all these separate voices. So you just get an increased voice count. I should probably turn down all this jitter so you can kind of hear what's going on a little easier. So yeah, that's the difference between these two. And this one, I I put the limit at 16. You could add more if you wanted. Um, but I don't know, for me, that was enough. I know that like, I think Mutable Instruments Clouds goes to something like 40 or 60, but I feel like that would be a CPU overload. So yeah. So, all right, let me show you these two different ways to do this. or I guess three ways, because I'll show you how to do this with MSCGs because that's another way you could you could set this up. So if we had a voice stack modulator over, over here, which, well, I actually had it nested inside of another polygrid, so I'll just put one inside because this is how I had it set up. Whoops, I forgot that that's on there now. put this at five in manual. Okay, so if I want one knob to just scroll through all of those, one thing you can do now with the with the MSEGs is you can kind of use curves in the same way as I would use logic to set something like this up. So Uh, we want five. All right. First thing, you would want to put this in hold and then get a macro, assign it to the, uh, I forgot where's the phase, over here. On this one, if you take it all the way to 360, it snaps back to zero. So I would recommend taking it to like 359.9. Okay, so now that's moving through there. And then you can kind of simply just do this little trick where you can have each one just open up separately. So this will be the first one. All right, this will be the second one. So this one will go like this 
Ah, my mouse is getting stuck. All right, I added too many dots. Okay. This one will go like that. This one will go like this. All right, this one will go like this. And so pretty much the whole idea is just, this is scrolling through each of these. So now we can assign this one to here. This one to here. This one to here. And oh, I messed this pattern up. I forgot there's five, so. What's each one doing? Th that's the first. That's the second. Third. Okay, yeah, this one I messed up. Oh, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Are these doing the same thing? Oh, wait, no, yeah, that's... Okay, that's fine. So this one will just get copied over here. This one will go like that. All right, so which ones did I already do? Okay, so this one over here, this one over here. Okay, so now you have one knob doing all that. And then if we go into here, we can, you know, put a sampler over here. And then to cut the voices off, you can basically just put an attenuator here, assign this to it. Uh, because since this, is this, since this is a polyphonic patch, each voice is gonna do something separately. And since it's a polyphonic patch, if you add randomizers, they're also going to all work separately. Because there's five voices. And what if you took poly off, they would all run the same, but they're all going to run separately. So that would basically give you the jitter. So pretty much this combination, this would be your density knob. These would be jitter. And yeah, um, if you wanted to do this Instead, with Logic, it's kind of the same idea as I've done some of these videos before showing how to make kind of Logic sequencers, but if we were just to take this knob and multiply it by 5, So here, let me set up another one of these so we can assign a separate one. All right, so if we were to assign this to five, we're gonna want one modulator for each one. So all right, I'm first gonna run this into here. I'm gonna get biases. them here and run these into the next one and basically what this is doing is it's making it so that each one is like a full step behind the last one so that th they'll all happen one after another uh, now there's gonna there's gonna be other steps to this because uh, you know I'll show you in a second there's gonna be a problem which you can probably already see is that it goes into the negative You see, yeah, it goes into the negative, so that's a problem. So what you can do is you can basically just say that you only want this to come on, for example, let's see. All right, so let's put each one of these.
So I'll say, I'll say basically that I want this one to open if uh, um, this value is uh, more than zero. I'm, so it'll basically be open the whole time. And then we'll do, for this one, we'll say if this one is more than zero, and let me make sure if this is looking right. Yeah, okay, so that works. If this one is more than zero, and yeah, you just keep going. There, so yeah, either one of these ways will work. Um, this is typically how I would have done something like this, but now that you have the msegs, you can do it this way too. Uh, I kind of usually find that if you, if you need something really, really accurate, this would be a better way because the msegs, because it's like not going to 360, it's going to 335 or 359.9. Sometimes it can be slightly off, like if you're running sequencers and stuff, but for something like this, it's not, you know, it doesn't need to be hyper accurate. So yeah, that's how that's how you can do that to uh, automate the voices in the voice stack. Okay, so now in this one, I actually just made this patch before making this video, so, so it might take me a <laughs> might take me a second to remember how it's all done. Well, here if we look inside of here. We can see, so this this is right here is kind of important. So the whole the whole way that this is working is that I have kind of the same kind of sequencer as I had right there, except this one's going to sixteen, whereas the other one went to five, and these ones turn on each of the voices, and then these ones send a signal into the gain so that the voices don't step but they're um they're basically like linear they're gradual and then over here i have a pitch that's sending into the main one over here pitch in and the reason i have that is because in order to get may, i might be wrong about this there might be other ways to do this but from what i've seen if you want to split out multiple voices with these things in the grid each voice has to be pitch differently or else it just sees it as one voice so um basically i have each one of these voices pitching differently but i don't want all that pitch information so basically to bypass it i'm just sending the pitch from here into here so um yeah i don't know if i should actually go through and build this whole thing i'm not going to build this whole thing because uh it's basically I'm kind of just trying to explain to you how to do it. I think, you know, if you can make those kind of sequencers like I was just showing, you can basically do this. Uh, you can see pretty much the signal path right here. But so, yeah, basically this density knob runs through each of these. Same way as that other one. Each of these, I'll, I'll go into the note grid and show you how each of these slots are set up. So... This note grid patch, there's a button for each one that's assigned from the, this sequencer here. This button will decide whether or not that voice comes into the gate. And now every single note is transposed slightly different, like I was saying, in order to get multiple notes out of each one. And then this value is just going into the gain over here, and this is automated by these. And so basically I have the same kind of sequencer as I had in the last thing set multiplied by 16. So there's going to be a ramp going through each one of these sequentially like that. And so, um, yeah, so the way I have this set up, this one is a monophonic patch. This one goes to 16 and this polygrade over here goes to 16. And if you look at the voice count, so you can see if I have my density down here, you don't see any, and as you bring it up, you get more. And you can see these. So basically, yeah, that's a way that you can do um, 
grain clouds in the grid. Cool. All right. Um, I hope people found that useful. Thanks for watching. Bye.